In fact, um, virtually the entire IKEA cafeteria, it was December uh, or January, December 2015, January 2016. It's one of the first pictures I've ever taken. And um, th everybody goes cold. And everybody came in from outside because they didn't have a place to live. You can get breakfast for two bucks and coffee for 79 cents. For less than $3, you can have a place to hang out for four or five hours. We, you probably are putting this together in your head. This is a tragic irony. IKEA is a home furnishing store. And most of the people <coughs> in the morning don't have a home that they can furnish. So that's that man's personal narrative. But it speaks to a much bigger issue of social justice and inequity. And it helps to know the background. And so I like to talk about my pictures. You know, what I've discovered in the last year of art is that some artists like to be aloof and mysterious. I like to be transparent and open. And I, I, when I bring out this work, I've been lucky enough to bring it out, I want to talk about it. Because I want to talk about these issues. Now, we might have a whole lot of different ideas on how we would deal with inequity in a society and how we would make things better for everybody. But um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to resonate if we are looking at data and we're reading like op-ed pieces in the New York Times or Fox News or wherever, right? You see the picture, you know the story, and now you have a doorway into the bigger picture. And that's why I started taking pictures, because it, it pretty much dawned on me right away that I could do that. I could talk about big stuff, um, but I could do it in a way that was approachable and not threatening. The picture has to be good separate from any political agenda I might have, right? He has a fantastic beard. I mean, that guy has a beard ever. And he's wearing a shirt, which, kind of, which shows off his fantastic beard. So, I'd like to think, the, and the red lamps from Ikea did a great job in the black and the white window there. I got lucky. Um, I shot that with my little first camera. I didn't even have a real camera yet. And, um, but it was just the right spot. So the picture still has to work. But that doesn't mean that even if it's composed well and it's pretty, we can't talk about stuff, bigger stuff. And I have some pictures here, some of my photography pictures. Um, and that, they have for me. Now sometimes, every now and then, I just take a picture because it's pretty. Not everything I do has a bigger meaning. Um, the model over there, that in that black picture, that we were on that photo shoot, and that photo shoot is about patriarchy. So you can see her back reflected in the stream, and um, you know she has kind of red blonde hair. And we shot that in the Jefferson National Forest in Blacksburg. A little tangent, funny story. She had to hold still for 3.1 seconds to shoot that. And the lighting person didn't show up, so we're out there in the woods alone, and um, she doesn't know me, right? She's like, she's a tech theater major. I'm like a 48-year-old guy. <laughs> so, um, and I was like, do your parents like know you're hanging out with other guys in the woods and taking your clothes off? But that's not true. So she's holding still for like 3.1 seconds. She did a great job. I'm downstream. It's pretty cold because it's May. Um, and she jumps out of the water. I didn't know what happened. Turns out there were little tiny fish in the stream. And, uh, oh, there you go. So, um, she was being able to hunt. So, the, the, the thing about that picture is that it's her backside, and it's in total darkness. It's a largely unedited photo. There was a tree that I had to take out because the overcast of light it was. It's unedited. And that's a, that's a piece about patriarchy. The vulnerability of women in a patriarchal society. And the, I can talk more about it later and, and all the meanings of the black and the, and the color and stuff. But that's what that's about. And so we were out there that night and there was this little fern garden not too far away. And we took a picture of her. I mean, it's not on the show, but um, it has no meaning whatsoever. She's gorgeous, the ferns were gorgeous, we just took a pretty picture. So not everything I do is very meaningful. Um, it's a lovely photo. But that's why I take pictures. I would like to show people's individual stories, and I'd like to showcase them to the world so that we can all talk about ideas that are meaningful to us and the human condition. So, before we do Q&A, I wanted to maybe point out a couple other pictures. Um, the, uh, th this
this is a this is a picture kind of like the one we took of, of Madeline. This is just a fun picture. Um, this is a street shot, and this guy's name I since found out is, is Cyrus, and he went to train to learn how to swallow swords and do this. Like this is his job. Like he gets paid to do this. And my kids were with me when I was taking this picture, and they thought she was a real marionette. The makeup was that good, and they were handing candy out at Halloween. How fun is that? And um, they went all around downtown Blacksburg, and everybody loved them. And I, I, I kind of feel like my kids are in the show. You picked a lot of, of pictures of my kids, which is great. But now I feel like a parent talking to you all, like trapping you in a corner. Like, These are my kids. So this is my almost seven-year-old Simon. And this picture, and that picture of Eli, who's my four-year-old, the black and white long skinny. That's the same truck. And this is the kind of stuff that happens sometimes. Um, we were driving down the road, and Eli saw a old tire laying in an abandoned parking lot of an abandoned building. He's like, I want to play with that tire. And he was three at the time. So we stopped to play with the tire. It was infested with mosquito larva. Is that <laughs> the way it is? So we shook all the, you know, and then, have you guys seen mosquito larva? They're like these little crazy, like they're creepy. So we killed all the mosquito larvae, and, um, and we rolled that tire around, and then the sun was setting. And as the sun was setting, we got these nice shadows. So I just stumbled into two lovely photos of my children, and they have no larger meaning other than I love my children. But on the other hand, to the right of Madeline's picture, you'll see a young girl, her name is Abby, she's 12, and that other long skinny picture, that's Simon. And of course, whenever, the, whenever my children see their clothes are off and they're in it. And um, they are fair as the days long. Abby's mom died a couple days before that, 45, of pancreatic cancer. And that's down in South Carolina, and there's this really cool nature preserve where you can go and just literally dig a hole in the ground and bury a body. No need for a coffin, nothing. It's 70 acres, it's called Rams Creek. And a couple days before that, we hiked, uh, I'd taken um, all my nieces and nephews, there's five of them, and my boys, and we found, we picked a grape and we picked it by that stream. And then a couple of days later, the day that picture was taken, um, we were back at the little memorial service. And so, the other wonderful thing about photography is, that tells a nice story for all of us, and it's kind of nice that you all know it now, but it tells a wonderful story for the people that were at that service and the people in my family. The, um, the cool thing about that is um, Christy, she's the woman of dying, Abby's mom, and that's Abby helping my son navigate that stream, um, now have a picture to remember the day that we remember her mom. So that's a nice story. And there's no bigger social justice issue. It's just a nice story. So um, one more thing before I take questions. The, uh, you'll notice Brooke picked two Star Trail pictures, and that, that's, what, that's what this is. So the North Star will be about here, and you'll see the, the, the stars. Both of these are about 45 minutes worth of uh, photography. I stumbled into this because, you know, I take care of my boys all day long. I, I stay with them a lot. It was one of the conditions of having children this late in life. I, I wanted to stay home with them and work from home. And so I find myself available at night. And so the night sky sort of opened up to me. And uh, I shot this picture um, using nothing but moonlight and stars. The front of this church is illuminated by moonlight. And my job is made really easy because there's apps that tell me where the moon is. And like, where, you know, so it's really cool. I don't have to like, stand up there all night and wait. <laughs> um, I, I grew up, I grew up in the 70s. I had a, I had a rotary dial phone. And it was a party line. Nobody knows what a party line is here, right? Like, you pick up the phone and you got a people on it, right? Now there's an app that tells me where the moon is at. So, uh, these pictures don't have any greater meaning other than maybe in the sense that this sort of shows our place in the universe. Um, but again, these are, just, these are just meant to be great. So, let me, I hope you guys have questions. So, let me, um, let me take some, some questions if you need. Yes? Can you talk a little bit more about your project with the Karen? Because I think that sounds incredible and I would love to hear sure. about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, 
I, I, so I, I started showing my work in January of this year. I got a good camera last February, and um, actually, Mark Chewbacca, who was here tonight, showed me how to like put my camera on manual mode, take some pictures, body okay. image. So props out to Mark for like introducing me to basic photography, and then I learned how to do it. <laughs> so um, I had all these pictures that Fleet Array, who has a gallery in Rona, saw my work. And she has taught, she's hooked together with Plant Paradigm on a number of shows. And um, so I said, hey, you know, I got this idea. I want to talk about Planned Parenthood, and I want to talk about making medical decisions based on biology, not politics and um, superstition. And at the time, it was before the general election, <laughs> and um, there was all this discussion and all this misinformation about, and last year, of course, you know, the Center for Medical Life, that fake group that did the abortion videos and stuff, they had all this, I saw there were these people in the middle that were, were really confused about um, uh, health, basic health issues, right? So I thought, well, you know, I could use photography to tell the story of Planned Parenthood to show what it means to listen to our bodies and listen to our, 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 our biological needs when it comes to healthcare. Not just for women, but for all genders. And um, I mean, I've been, I've been to Planned Parenthood retreat. And so years ago, um, in Wisconsin, where I grew up. But, um, so, that's what I wanted to do. So I, I, I said, hey, Fleeta, you know, pitch that to uh, Rachel, who's gonna come here tonight. She's gonna be here. And th they liked it. And so we're doing two things. We're doing a little mini show on biology, essentially, in September. And I've never been there, but it's the Alexander Heath Gallery. Do you know, do you know where it's at? Mm -hmm. Alexander Heath, yeah. So that's in front of me. Yeah, it's a great yeah. space. Yeah, so there'll be 40 to 45 pictures as a preview, and then we're going to spend the next couple of years, we're hoping to have a business plan in place by January, and then we're going to spend most of 2018 and 2019 going Planned Parenthood in South Carolina covers North Carolina, South Carolina, West Virginia, and half of Virginia. And we're going to, I'm going to go around to all the, the clinics, and I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to photograph people's stories from birth to death. And we're going to talk about HPV, vaccine, we're going to talk about vaccinations, we're going to talk about cancer screening, perhaps the stuff that Planned Parenthood does. And the working title of the project is Dispelling This, because that's what we want to do, we want to dispel this. So that's, without, you know, and we, I've already started working on it. Of course, the photos are all secret. Um, you have to come to the September show to see it. And then you'll have to wait two years after that to <laughs> see the stuff in the project. But that's what's happening. And the goal here is to use individual narratives to talk about the human condition and why we should make medical decisions based upon biology and not constructs, not ridiculous constructs of politics and superstition. So, follow up question? Anything, anything else? I'm in love with you, but that's okay. the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> Somebody else, please ask me a question. I'm just more on Well, thanks. I'm, I'm so excited. I was already happy.
So one of the things that, so I, I started watching YouTube videos and taking pictures and I'm, I'm looking at stuff and I'm reading about art and stuff and learning about art. The thing that I saw right off the bat was like all the news were like 18 to 20 year old women. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there are people in the world that are besides 18 to 20 year old women you can take naked pictures of, them, right? <laughs> so I, uh, well, uh, Steven's here tonight. He's in a number of the shows. I, I have, I've shot women as old as 52. I, I, I'm hoping to shoot someone who's uh, about to be 60. I'm hoping for older. You're a very handsome man. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if, if you're willing, I'm, I'm able. Um, that project shows the human form. And it shows the point of the vulnerability is that it shows vulnerability in different situations. So in one picture where Stephen and Kayla are, they're sitting in a chair in a room that's falling apart. And that is allegorical to, uh, I'm going to get to your question, but I want to fill in the big picture first. Uh, that's allegorical to the vulnerability to environment, right? So that picture is a little out of context because that picture is about vulnerability to patriarchy. But it's one of many pictures. I'm hoping to have over 100, and I'm going to do a book. Um, because you can self-publish anything, right? Because, like, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so, um, don't, don't think I'm like, oh, cool, like I have a publisher. Like, literally nobody knows about me. Nobody knew about me before January. And nobody would have known about me had Talia not helped me in the show, because, like, I screwed up my entry, and she called me, and she's like, hey. You know? <laughs> so, um, so, let's get to your question. So, bigger picture, there's a bigger context there. So, in that book, there are literally, as long as you're at least 18, um, that book will have lots of news in it. And so that won't stand out so much as a female nude in the larger context of that project. But now let me tell you about why that picture is about patriarchy. And why I was so frustrated when I only saw basically young women being photographed. And it's not that I have a problem with women. I'm a, I'm a straight guy. I think, you know, that's great, right? It's wonderful. <laughs> the, the problem I had was that I, it was misrepresentative of, of the human condition. So the other problem I have is that there's this really sneaky element to, how can I put this? If you go on Craigslist, you see a lot of people looking for new models, and they're always asking for, like, right now, like there's one that's like 18 to 30, women only. Okay. There's, it pervades our society. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to turn this on its head, and I'm going to do something a little ironic, and I'm going to have, I'm going to make a point. You don't see your face. She's not an individual. She's a data point in, an, in the aggregate. It's her back. She's vulnerable. She literally, you come, you're approaching her from her back. That's her vulnerability to the approaching threat. The blackness is literally the blackness of patriarchy. So the uh, the problem here is portraying this. Next. By the way, these photos are so good. I have not any text. So everything I'm telling you will be written down so it's not confusing. I don't, I'm not leaving this up for interpretation. The paleness of her skin also represents vulnerability, and the nudity represents vulnerability. So that's what that particular, so the patriarchy is literally surrounding her. The blackness of patriarchy is literally surrounding her. And she is vulnerable to whatever could be coming up on her. And so in this case, the only way to show that is to use a female nude. Right? If I want to show the vulnerability of women in a in a, in, a, in a culture that has core elements of misogyny and patriarchy, I have no choice but to use a woman. And you'll also notice that she's not real thin. Um, she has curves, and she's a real person that eats food, and it's like, you know, she's not like a fashion model, she's not like a size zero. Um, and she did a wonderful job in the shot, by the way. It was a lot of work. She was in that stream for over 30 minutes. I have the luxury of, like, not being completely immersed in the water for fish or not biting meat. Um, she really nailed it. So in that case, the only way to show the problem is to literally show the problem. But unless, of course, it's explained in context, which will be in the book. But that's a great question. Please, someone else ask me. Jake, what did you do in a life? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's fine. So um, I am a phenomenally uncredentialed individual. I, uh, I ran a saw repair shop in Rome for 15 years and, um, on Cleveland Avenue. And then I thought about fixing houses, but then the woman that I have all these babies with, <laughs> um, she said, I'd known her for five years, and she said, 
literally, out of the blue, one day, in number five, and she never talked about kids. She said, hey, let's have some kids. I'm like, I'm like, let me see. Because I have a son story. I have a son over So um, I said yes, obviously, because you can see the photographic evidence in my crotch. And um, so I did that for 15 years. And then um, the, the last, basically, seven years, I've been keeping children alive and teaching them how to be critical thinkers and lead with reason and kindness. We'll see how it turns out. Those are my two metrics, right? Reason and kindness. We'll see how that turns out about 15 years. <laughs> so I fixed cars. And then, and, then I, and then I made a lot of life, and now I'm keeping it alive. Evolution requires two things of me, that I procreate, and that I stay around long enough to not make them assholes. So, any, anybody else? Okay, no problem. Uh, we got to be here now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat and drink more wine. And please drink too. And I'm, please ask, come to me individually and talk to me. Uh, please join me in a big round of applause for Talia and Thank you, James.